Hey guys, it's Mythos Gamer. Welcome to our first game of Arkham Horror. For our first game, we're using only the base set and playing with four investigators. I'm not going to be going over the rules too much. There are some really good tutorial videos on the rules of the game already up on YouTube. This is more of a let's play to kind of help people who are new to it see what goes on and how you're supposed to play the game. Uh, so let's get this started. Let's go to our first investigator. All right, our first investigator is going to be Joe Diamond, the private eye. He starts off with four sanity, six stamina, and begins the game at the police station. He has the hunches ability. He rolls one extra bonus die when he spins a clue token to add to a roll. Uh, hopefully we won't have to spend those clue tokens on the rolls. We'll be able to use those to close some gates, but uh, we'll see. It's always nice to have in case something uh, crazy happens. He starts the game with eight dollars, three clue tokens, one common item, the 45 automatic. I've already got pulled. Gives plus four to combat checks, the physical weapon. And he also starts with two common items and one skill. Let's go ahead and draw those and see what we get. First common item is the axe. Plus two to combat checks, plus three instead if your other hand is empty. Uh, that probably will never happen since we've already started with the 45 automatic, but it's not always nice to have. And let's see what else we get. The knife, plus one to combat checks. Uh, not too useful since we've already got two better one-handed weapons, but it's always nice to have a backup. We can trade it to somebody else. And then he also gets one skill. We got stealth. Exhaust to reroll and evade check. Nice. Um, let us uh, keep our speed up pretty high and hopefully if our sneak isn't big enough to get through, we'll be able to just uh, do a reroll. And let's move on to our next investigator. Our second investigator is Mandy Thompson, the researcher. Uh, starts with five sanity, five stamina. Her special ability is research. Once per turn, she can activate this ability after any investigator, including yourself, makes a skill check. That investigator then re-rolls all the dice rolled for that check that did not result in a success. That's a pretty awesome ability to have. Uh, great for our first game. She's going to be starting out the library. She starts with six dollars, four clue tokens, and then randomly she gets two common items and one unique item and one skill. Let's see what she gets. All right, our first common item is a lantern, plus one to luck checks. Our second common item, the derringer, plus two to combat checks, and it cannot be lost or stolen unless you choose to allow it. Let's go ahead and get our unique item. We got holy water, it's a magical weapon, plus six to combat checks, but you have to discard it after you use. And then for her skill, bravery. Any phase, exhaust free roll, a horror check. Um, she has a pretty high willpower, but we'll be able to uh, keep her will a little lower so we can increase her fight just in case it comes down to that. But uh, again, good skill to have. Our third investigator is going to be Daryl Simmons, the photographer. Starting with four sanity, six stamina. And he begins the game with the newspaper. His ability is Town Encounter. When drawing location encounters in Arkham, Daryl draws two cards and may choose whichever one of the two he wants. This ability does not work when drawing gate encounters in the other world. Starts the game with four dollars, one clue token, and the retainer. During the upkeep, we gain two dollars. We roll a die and then discard this card on one. Uh, great thing to have. It doesn't. We don't have to roll up for it on the first turn, so we'll at least get $2 out of it, hopefully a lot more. And then he has randomly one common item, two unique items, and one skill. Let's see what we get. Common item, he got an axe. So, plus two to combat checks, and three if we have an empty hand. His unique item, sword of glory, plus six to combat checks. Awesome weapon to start the game with. Next we have the Pallid Mask, plus two to evade checks. And for the skill, Will. When you spend the clue token to add any will check, adds one extra bonus die. 
And finally, Bob Jenkins, a salesman. Starting off with four sanity, six stamina. He begins the game with a general store. His ability is Shrewd Dealer. Whenever Bob draws one or more cards from the common item deck, he draws one extra card and then discards one of the cards. He starts again with nine dollars, two common items, two unique items, and one skill. We get, do get to use his ability uh, at the very beginning, so let me go ahead and draw an extra common item. And let's see what we got. We got a cross. It's a magical weapon. Plus zero to combat checks. Plus three if they are undead. Plus one to horror checks. The map of Arkham. During movement, exhaust to get one extra movement point. And the old journal. It's a tomb. During movement, exhaust and spend one movement point to make a lore minus one check. If you pass, gain three clue tokens and discard old journal. If you fail, nothing happens. Well, it's kind of a tough decision, but I think with Bob having such a high movement speed, we're going to discard the map of Arkham. Uh, it's, we can uh, have plenty of movement already. Let's see, for his unique items, we got the powder of Ibn Ghazi. Sorry about the pronunciation. I'm not very good at pronouncing all the names. Let's see, it's going to be a magical weapon, plus nine to combat checks. But you lose one sanity and you have to discard after you use it. Our other unique item is going to be a warding statue. In any phase, discard warding statue after failing a combat check to reduce the monster's combat damage to zero stamina. This can also be used to cancel an ancient one's entire attack for one turn. Very nice. And his skill, speed. Plus one speed. When you spend a clue token to add to any speed check, add one extra bonus die. I'm glad we discarded the map of Arkham. Alright, next I'm going to pull out the Ancient One. Alright, for our Ancient One we're going to be using Azathoth. If Azathoth awakens, the game is over and investigators lose. This would be a pretty good Ancient One for our first game. Um, kind of simplifies it a little bit, don't have to worry about the last part of the game where you have to actually fight the Ancient One if it wakes up. Uh, he has a Doom Track of 14, which uh, again is good for our first game, gives us a little more time to get some gates sealed and uh, hopefully win. And his ability is Worshippers, since Azathoth promises nothing except destruction. Only the insane worship him. However, their fanaticism gives them strength. Maniacs have their toughness increased by one. Not a real powerful ability, but uh, something we definitely have to watch out for. Alright, now we have the board set up. We're going to draw our first Mythos card and resolve that before we start our first turn. See what we get. Strange Tremors. We're replacing a gate at Independent Square and drawing a monster. Let's see our first gate. It's going to be the Great Hall. The minus one. Let's put that over here at Independent Square. We'll lose our clue token, unfortunately. And let's draw a monster. See what we get. A zombie. Not too terrifying. All right, our zombie is ready to go. Next, we're going to place our clue token. Let's see where we're going to put one at. It is going to the unnameable. Go ahead and add one here. So we're going to have two clue tokens to start the game. Movement. Well, the only monster we have on the table right now is a moon, so no movement for us. Let's go on to the text. All Chthonians and Doles and Arkham are returned to the cup. If at least one monster returns to the cup, raise the chair level by one. Uh, luckily, we don't have any of those, so uh, nothing's going to happen. Fantastic. I guess now we will move on to our first turn.